have you as our February Artist of the Month. Yay, um, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Honored. I'm, honored. I feel like there are just so many rich themes in the album. There's this idea of wrestling with violence. There's the idea of personal relationships. There's kind of that familial aspect and unpacking your own mm-hmm. personal history. Um, and I would love for you to just talk me through a little bit what it was like to work through those themes and emotions, if it was cathartic, if it was painful, if it was kind of a combination. Yeah, I think like anyone who is making art during like a global pandemic where you're locked inside, um, you're basically, you you have a lot more space to draw from fantasy um, as opposed to reality because you're not actually doing anything. You're not actually meeting anyone. Like you're, you're not really doing anything. So in a way it's like an infant, I, I, you can kind of either get really stuck in reality and in the present or you can like go deep into fantasy because it's infinite when you're when you're locked in a house for two years basically you know so I kind of chose to go in that direction more of um of leaning into the fantasy side of creativity and imagination and um also like going through such a heavy time like you know pretty much everyone um in the whole world was having a a dark painful time and you kind of you can choose to create art that uplifts and kind of turns that spirit around or you can go deeper into the kind of sad more contemplative um you know emotionally sensitive side and I decided to kind of go to door number three which is like more processing the rage and frustration and spinning out and um negative fantasy I decided to kind of go down that corridor more um like actively chose that and so pretty much all the themes and all the songs kind of deal with processing those emotions as opposed to um trying to turn it around or trying to get super bogged down it was more like the energy resisting against that or like leaning leaning into that frustration more so you know there especially on on the first you know two thirds of the album or three fourths of the album. It's like these very human themes, like um, feeling, feeling, um, feeling oppressed by certain systemic, uh, certain systems of injustice or feeling frustrated by lack of communication from relationships or, um, or just feeling, um, a sense of general dread from the violence that just creeps into your life, just being a femme person on planet earth and, um, and just being a human, like the, the mortality and violence of just being a fucking like worm of a, of a person in a very like aggressive planet, you know? So I just wanted to kind of lean into those darker themes and even, even with the greatest, which is really inspired by like eighties love, like rock ballads. I wanted to kind of explore, um, the gravity of the absence of reciprocated love as opposed to like the sweetness of love kind of more the depth of how much love can affect you when it's not being returned which is still like love affecting you but it's like a different it's like the shadow side of love or something so so yeah I was like actively really delving into into um process the cathartic processing of these kind of darker emotions and I feel like when people talk about emotional music they kind of like default are talking about sad music but I I, like in kind of connecting with metal and new metal more I was realizing I was having like an extremely emotional experience with a lot of the instrumental elements of metal but it was a different kind of emotional palette it was like aggression and anger and rage which is like those are fucking emotions like those are valid emotions that need to be processed and um and yeah so I I mean I can only speak for like how I relate to art but in in a lot of ways I use especially music to kind of um to kind of uh, soundtrack or um, as a catalyst for an emotional experience. Like when I'm feeling pumped up, I'll like put on music that like hypes me up even more. Like if I'm going to go out or something, or if I'm like feeling sad and I want to go deeper, you know, Elliot Smith immediately, like let's fucking go there. Let's get sad as fuck. Um, And I, so, you know, I wanted to specifically make music that I thought maybe other people could use to kind of, um, 
use as like a catalyst or a soundtrack for these kind of more like rageful, violent, aggressive, um, cathartic experiences. Definitely, definitely. And I definitely felt that um, thematic tension throughout. And I also think that it's very, it's a very sonically diverse record as well, because you've got a lot of those heavier, rageful elements that you talked about. And then there's the tracks like Call Me Home, right? And Mm -hmm. and tried to understand that I felt that kind of like Fleetwood Mac vibe. And so with that, and as you said, it was like a very intentional choice that you made to go down this path. Did you go into it with the intention of balancing it out sonically as well? Or is that something that you kind of discovered along the way? I think part of it for me is like, I have kind of two parts of my being one that's like the songwriter and then the one that's like the producer. And once I go into producer world, I'm really just thinking about like following the songs lead for like making the best version of the song. I'm not really thinking as much about like the, um, the, like, you know, the story of it as much like I think I'm supporting the emotional world of it as a producer but I really am just listening to like what the song wants to be um Mm -hmm. and so um I feel like you know songs are kind of like children where like as much as you want to be like you're gonna be a dentist you're gonna be like a classical pianist you're gonna be a baseball player like no matter how much a parent like puts that on their child like the child is going to like be what they want to be and you can either choose to like support them in that or not and the songs are kind of like that too like I tried to make that song try to understand a heavy rock song with like Ty playing drums and like Jay Maskis is playing guitar and like we went like all the way heavy rock and 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 the song was just like no bitch like I'm a folk pop song like give me Cheryl Crow and I'm like Mm -hmm. okay like that's what you want like I'm here to serve like I'm here to serve the song and then it was kind of my job going back to the artist again to try to find a way to weave the story together and and you know I think being an artist in this playlist era where people are really open to a lot of different genres and are, have like a, have like musical ADHD where they're like skipping d- between all these different things like I was kind of just leaning into that more as opposed to fighting it and like kind of um, in a way wanting to make an album that feels like a haunted house or like a corn maze where it's like every room is like a different scene or like like a lot of movies that I like have this kind of like parasite or something where it has like all these different genres in one movie, like one second, it's like really funny and dark. And the next second, it's like literally violent as fuck. And the next second you're you're, like crying. It's like a drama. And I love movies. And I think that's so fucking Korean to be like so dramatic in every direction. And so, yeah, I wanted to like lean into the drama of these like kind of um, like, like whiplashy kind of feelings on the album and also I think I think people like to I think people are open to that a lot more now than than they've ever been definitely yeah I love that idea of of not limiting yourself in that sense and kind of on a similar note I'm really fascinated by your classical music and composition background and would love to hear a little bit more prior to my time at Consequence I a long time ago was on staff at the Nashville Symphony and would just hear kind of how you like structured this sort of like you know a classical piece with the movements and where the movements are in your brain like if there's a definitive starts and finishes but just talk me through that aspect a little bit yeah I think like anyone who's ever tried to listen to classical music in their car has had this experience where they like have to constantly like ride the volume dial because it'll be like so quiet and like turn all the way up and then it'll be like fucking loud and you're like whoa (laughs) like it has that like really dynamic range where it's like fuck a Spotify playlist like the dynamics are like just as broad as they can be like they're not it's not like for modern listeners and like in terms of like that listening um that you know like modern music it's like it's kind of like the waveform is like this like brick where it's like okay you just like set it and forget it volume wise like dynamic wise whereas classical music it just like has this extreme range and I think that like when I make music I inherently kind of have I'm drawn to that extreme those extremities and let that dynamic range and I think that obviously that's displayed on the album with my like shamelessness with like putting try to understand and like sorry entertainer back to back where it's like very extreme differences but I just I think that's interesting and I think that's very human like humans are so extreme in our emotional palette and 
going between like having such a good day and like being home and like being fucking depressed as fuck and then like going to work and like having to like have final boss energy and like protect your energy and it's like it's just very human to have all to have all that range and I think that um I think that yeah I just kind of didn't want to shy away from leaning in into that that dynamic uh that shock that shock value I love that a lot. And I thought, <laughs> um, feminine water turmoil is that that's the name of the Yeah. Term. Yeah. I thought that mm-hmm. was stunning and I loved it. Thank as you. A conductor. I thought it was so beautiful. Um, and was that, was that a cello that was kind of like that main instrument? Cello. Thing? Yeah. It's very like kind of a, a reference to like the Bach cello suite. So it's like the cello is the lead and then violins are kind of like those like mermaidy siren voices mm-hmm. in the background. Oh, I loved it. And I, I read a little bit, um, about some of like the the fables and like you mentioned that fantasy aspect um and would love to hear a little bit more about that as it tied into that track specifically yeah um I feel like so much of the album like I said like maybe the first two-thirds or three-fourths of it are dealing with these very human like even though it's fantasy because it's not like so literally autobiographical it's still dealing with very real human emotions and human themes. Like I said, like systemic oppression or relationship problems or lack of communication or like, you know, all, all these things are very human. And in the last two songs, I wanted to kind of get into a more existential space and think more about humanity and relationship to like nature and the cosmos. And so to me, like having a track that didn't have human language on it, like, or I guess music, music is like transcends human language. It's like birds sing and like whales fucking sing, like, and like the trees are rhythmic. Like to me, like, like instrumental music is not exclusively human. And so I wanted to have this kind of more transcendent bridge into not a love song, which is like a song that is way more about like questioning why humans are always centering themselves in everything and like and like posing more of an existential thought about our relationship to to nature as opposed to being like why are they not answering me like which is like so human and so like zoomed in I wanted to kind of zoom out a little bit by the end which kind of mirrors a little bit of how I ended my first album which is like way more contemplative and way more existential that's fascinating. I love it. Um, moving away from, from the album a little bit, um, artist of the month generally is something that we, uh, like to name for an artist who we feel is kind of about to reach the next level or like the different stage of their career. So is there anything that you're looking forward to this year and any personal or professional goals that you have? Yeah, I think that, um, for me, the impetus for making a heavy album was definitely in touring my last album and um, kind of feeling this resistance of like, you know, sound people telling me to turn my amp down or like questioning my band's like technical abilities, you know, like in the past I had always toured with like a queer fun band and there was a lot of met with a lot of just like cliche resistance of, you know, turning down and like, your voice is too quiet, blah, blah, blah. Just kind of like the classic annoying things that you deal with. And I think that's kind of was, was one of the impetuses for me really wanting to make um, a heavy album. And also with this kind of critical element of people looping me in with a lot of other Asian women, like with no regard for like our sonic differences. And, and, um, and so I think in a very like very uh flawed human kind of egotistical way me like being like well try to fucking compare me to them now if I make like metal music you know which is like toxic as fuck but like I'm not perfect you know and so um I think I'm I think I was in making this album very much thinking about how it would translate live and being able to tap into a more theatrical kind of aggressive live performance and and I have been lucky to uh, open for Japanese breakfast in the fall and start to practice that but I'm really excited about touring with Barishi this metal band from Vermont who's my backing band and um I think that I think that um yeah, I'm just really, really excited. I'm working with a choreographer right now and just like putting together like kind of a next level stage show and hoping to like kind of play some bigger stages. And obviously we're opening opening for Mitski and Heim. So we're going to be playing for like big audiences and hopefully do some more festivals and stuff. But I'm really excited to kind of like bring the circus on, on the road. 
Yeah, that's so exciting. Um, one of my favorite questions that I always like to ask people in conversations like this, um, not just, you know, the past couple of years of the pandemic in particular, but maybe if that's, you know, what you're feeling, but um, I love to know what is creatively filling you up right now, whether that's an album that really jumped out at you, or like you said, a movie since you have films, or if there was a book, poem, piece of work, if there's anything that's really top of mind that just filled your cup in that sense. Um, I think that I have been really, really inspired by nature, like in, in the pandemic and just in general, um, because like we live in, in this time where like, we're constantly be being told like what to think and like what to believe and what to wear and how to look and how to feel about everything. Like we like are such a saturated, um, like such a stimulated era of like information. And so I think that I've been really drawn to themes that are more in nature and every single kind of theme is in nature. There's like beauty, there's stillness, there's like extreme violence. I'm like obsessed with this Instagram account called nature is metal, which is just like these videos of like animals eating each other and like hunting each other down. And I just think that like humans just think we invented everything and it's so not true like nature carries all of the multitudes that humanity carries and I'm just like fascinated by by like the harshness and beauty of nature and um it's like so much more of a blank slate to me because they're not they're not beholden to this like weird technological era of like of like mirroring each other like humans just mirror each other so it's like it's not like individualism doesn't exist, but like nature has much more of a pure kind of individualism because everything comes from instinct. And of course, like animals and plants adapt and evolve too and are affected by each other. But I'm just, I'm just fascinated by like the rawness of nature and like the true, like violent, violent um, architecture of, of animals. I love that answer a lot. I've asked this question (laughs) and I've never gotten an answer. (laughs) I really love it. Thank you. Uh, is there anything about the album that you have been dying to share with people that I maybe didn't touch on? Um, I think that one of the like amazing, you know, I think being a solo artist is kind of a blessing and a curse because I have to carry so much on my own, like owning a small business and like being a boss and like hiring people for tour. And it can, it can be really uh, a lot in that regard but it can be such a blessing in the sense that I can literally hire a brand new band for every new project every new song I get to build a sonic world with new collaborators every time and so it was really amazing to make an album that like starts with Dirk Verburen from Megadeth drumming and ends with Jay Bellarose who's like an iconic jazz and like folk like just completely different world drummer like to me like that encapsulates so much of the spirit of the album that I was able to like go so hard in every direction and like, you know, on Skin and Rat, it's like I have Patty Harrison and Vagabond screaming vocals with me. Like I just went, I just like, I, I'm just like really proud of how um, extreme I went in every direction. And like, you know, having some of my friends from college um, play on Feminine Water Turmoil and like mm-hmm. going deeply into like my Bach inspiration. And, and even like, even the songs that, um, that seem mellower in the scope of it like make it right or something like that's still inspired by like the more like hysterical sides of Fleetwood Mac like I still I still like I feel like all of the I just feel really proud of like all the different inspirations and and um, other people's talents that I was able to pull into the album and, and I just feel like um, everyone that collaborated on the album deserves to have like a light shown on them too because um, I was only able to make this album by like building a team of like such incredible musicians on every different song. Great. Yeah, you should be proud of it. I love getting to hear more about it in your own words. It's been so interesting. Um, yeah, sure. Where did, you, where did you go to school? I went to Eastman School of Music in Rochester. So I actually like when I grew up in LA, I went to LOXA, which is an art high school. And I went to school with like Haim and Empresov and Femme, who's another musician, like a lot of music kids and art yeah. kids. So I, I grew up like kind of being in an academic music environment. And then I went to Eastman School of Music, uh, a music conservatory. And then just to give you my background, and then I moved back to LA and I started teaching music. And I think that... Um, I think that being a music teacher also has always been extremely influential on 
um, especially on this album and like on my on, in my like stage presence and everything because because children are like in this completely different dimension that is like totally fantasy I mean these kids like don't have cars they don't have money they don't like you know they have to live in they don't have to but they just do live in like a, a like a very imaginative fantasy reality and I think being around children so much for years like really helped me even as an adult tap into that world and also like every single basically when I was a music teacher I would teach like seven classes which is basically like doing seven shows a day and yeah. like and like already kind of being like familiar with that format of keeping an audience of children's attention for like 40 minutes at a time really like yeah. helped me understand like the human energy of like giving of like putting on a show and so I think when I when I put on a show like I really tap into kind of that whimsical teacherly kind of like music teacher fairy person yeah. <laughs> um, when I'm putting a show on and also just thinking about when I was putting the album together like really having this energy of like if you give me 40 minutes of your time like I promise to like keep your attention and keep you entertained the whole time like meeting the listener like more than halfway and I, I think that was really influential on, on making the album. Definitely, definitely. Um, to wrap up, yeah. I would like to know first what it was like to kind of carry this work into the studio and start recording it, producing it. And then if there's any um, special anecdotes that really jump out to you from that time. Yeah. So, um, like I said, I, I knew that I wanted to make this heavy rock album um, at the end of touring my first album, which, which ended around February of 2020. And I was about to go to Hedgebrook, which is um, a songwriter residency in Washington, like on the on an island off of Washington State. And the night before I was supposed to leave, um, Kyle Thomas, who's like a collaborator of mine and a studio partner of mine, he was like, we should go see this band Barishi, who's like this band of kids from my hometown in Vermont. Like they're playing at Five Star Bar, which is like this total, total dive bar. And he was like, they're a metal band. And I was like, about to have this like Bonnie Vera ass like in the woods pastoral cabin experience and I was like I don't know I have to like fly in the morning but I kind of like begrudgingly went to the show and immediately like upon the first song of like hearing the double kick pedal I was just like so fucking into it and I was just like throwing elbows like alone like in this like dive bar like it was it was in February so I had this like big coat on and I like really distinctly remember like having this coat on and like raging and I was like fuck like I know that metal is gonna like be a be a part of this album like I mm -hmm. I just immediately like soaked up all these like sonic elements from their set and then Barishi ended up you know, coming into the studio with me on Sorry Entertainer, and they're also my backing band on tour. So there's like this, they're like a very like um, wholesome nugget of inspiration for me on um, on this album cycle. And then, um, so then, you know, the second that I got to Hedgebrook, I just like wrote Needed to Work and like was like on my iPad making like, like MIDI um, double kick pedal, like, and like, like playing like super distorted guitar into my iPad, like being in this like beautiful cabin, just being like, <laughs> like, just like making like demonic music. And so that was really like the genesis of the album was like me just leaning into this kind of heavy, heavy um, sonic world. And then, um, and then obviously like lockdown happened. And then I was talking to Ty Siegel, who's a friend of mine and he, had just built a studio in Topanga and I was kind of looking for a place that I could record where I could kind of pot up and and um and uh be like kind of in a, in a safe uh isolated environment so um and also Ty is just like such a fucking weirdo and I knew that like what I like about new metal specifically is that it's really heavy but it's also kind of clowny and funny and not too self-serious like it's just like weird and I knew I wanted the album to also have an element of like kind of darkness but also like kind of goofiness and I knew that Ty would be like a perfect collaborator um because I can just be so weird around him because he's so strange and so it was really awesome to start the album with him um and and be able to really just kind of go deeply deeply into like kind of a, a bizarre I mean like needed to work and and skin and rat are heavy but like very tongue-in-cheek also they're not like I'm not like trying to be a metal musician. I'm just using kind of the, the sounds and energy from that world. 
So I started there and then I brought it back to the studio with my studio partner, Kyle Thomas, who's also my roommate. And also Meg Duffy is um, from Hand Habits is my roommate. We all live in the house and we were making like all three of our albums at the, at the same time in the house because we were just like locked down. So we were just kind of in the studio working on each other's albums. Mm. And so that's where I finished the album was like at the home studio. That is so cool. I just, yeah. I love things like that where it's like, if you hadn't gone to that show, yeah. you almost didn't go to how different things. Totally. Out. Absolutely. Like for sure. That was a very integral part of making the album. That's wonderful. Cool. Yeah. Well, it's been so lovely talking to you. I'm not sure if there's you. anything else you want to share, but um, overall, it's just been really great hearing about the album and connecting with you a little. Yeah, I guess the only like maybe last tidbit is I can just talk about the album cover if you want. Oh, um, please. So my my family are Zainichi, so we're like ethnic Koreans on my mom's side that were born and raised in Japan during the Japanese occupation of Korea. So my family is like very mixed Korean and Japanese kind of culturally. And um, my uncle Takeshi Hirota, he was an anime um, artist and producer and director. So like kind of Japanese visual art style has always kind of been in my family's world. And, and so I knew that I wanted to make, because the album is not autobiographical and it's much more about like kind of fantasy and um, and just like about an, like a kind of, uh, fluid emotional space. I knew I wanted the album cover to be an avatar and not just like a literal photo of me. So I was really lucky to collaborate with Andrew Thomas Wang on the album cover and kind of build this um, avatar that's inspired by Nure Ona, who's like this Japanese um, ghost character that has like a woman's head and, and a snake body. But I kind of, we kind of added these elements, like it has the crab legs, which is kind of a nod to my Cancerian energy and obviously has my face on it. So and then my mom did the Korean calligraphy, which is kind of, um, you know, tying in my my family's Korean heritage into it. So that's kind of the, the story of the album cover. Great. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that, too. Yeah, of course. Awesome. My pleasure.